let us start the conference today and I introduce you uh, Yuai Ru Tseng from E3, uh, Information Computer uh, Laboratory. So um, to, to present her in short, she has a master's science degree and a PhD in computer science from the, in the then I need absolutely, <laughs> from the uh, National Chao Tung University, Taiwan. Please correct me if, if, if I'm too, too ro wrong. So since uh, uh, four years, she's in the A3 ICL laboratories uh, working on, and, uh, on topics uh, like uh, uh, communication security in the area of uh, connected vehicle and uh, intelligent transport system. Uh, she is also active and uh, we meet uh, since a few years in the standardization uh, in Etsy and she is also active in IEEE 16.09.2 uh, group working on uh, security and she is um, presently uh, uh, in, scho in scholarship in uh, uh, for two months in uh, Paris, in, pa in uh, Telecom Paris Tech. Uh, so we were happy to have uh, her uh, visiting France and we have taken the opportunity to invite uh, UIRU for a conference. So, so thanks a lot for, for, your, for your venue in the uh, systemics and uh, uh, to introduce your, the activities about uh, uh, security of connected vehicles. So. Thank you, Bridget. Um, I'm very honored to be here to give a presentation about our um, development on telematics. Um, first, I'll give a brief introduction. My name is Heru Zhen, and I'm from Indu Industrial Technology Research Institute in Taiwan. Um, actually, in this institute, um, uh, some, some, some many people were asking me about, oh, is this institute is a public or private? Actually, it's a middle. Uh, we have the 50% funding from the government and 50 funding from the industries. And we have about uh, 6,000 people, employees in each, and we have the, about uh, six um, core labs and a lot of uh, research centers inside. And I'm from the information and communication laboratories and my department is connected vehicle in the division of for uh, telematics and vehicle control system. Okay, um, today my topics will focus on the E3, will focus on the E3 development on telematics, uh, but uh, at the very first. So um, I will give a brief introduction about the E3 where we are and what we are doing right now. And the second will be uh, focus on our V2X uh, development and vision. First is uh, V2X technology, and the second is achievement and the standard activities in the United States and the US, okay? And about our next step in Europe, okay? And the final is the concluding remarks. But uh, first of all, uh, I would like to ask a question. Uh, is someone know about uh, where is the Taiwan? Raise your hand. <laughs> Do you know Taiwan? <laughs> no, I've never been. <laughs> it's okay. Someone raise your hand. You? Okay. Um, uh, so, do you know where is the location in Taiwan? Oh, uh, Taiwan is uh, 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 besides China and uh, North Japan. Yes, correct. <laughs> Actually, I prepare a <laughs> uh, small <laughs> gift. <laughs> small gift. This, this, this is uh, definitely, I borrow, I take it from Taiwan. <laughs> it took 13 hours flight to be here. <laughs> okay, good. Um, okay, <laughs> here's the here's a E3. Oh. Here's the E3. Um, here's the we now we are in France. And this is Taiwan, and Taiwan is just uh, nearby the China, Korea, Japan, and Philippines. And we have a direct flight from Taiwan about uh, take us um, 13, 13 hours to be here. So it's it's good. 
Okay, and where is Yichi? So actually, Taiwan is a small island. Yeah, but it's very compact. And um, so maybe uh, may, maybe some some of you may know there's a Taipei in the uh, north of Taiwan, and there's a Xinju. We have the science park, including the TSMC, a lot of um, tech technical companies in, in here, and there's a lot of universities universities there. And uh, um, we have the headquarter uh, in Xinju. Here is our headquarter, and we also have our south uh, in the south park in Tainan, and we have uh, this district. Okay, and um, in Taiwan we have two districts in uh, about our offices, and we have uh, another offices. Okay, uh, in Tokyo and in the Russia, and also in the Western Europe in Berlin and in the Netherlands office in Eindhoven. And we also have the offices in the United States. Okay. Um, here is about our, okay, our institute. Um, I work here and we have almost 6,000 employees and about 24% um, have a PhD degree. And uh, we, we also uh, accumulate some uh, companies, startup companies and the uh, successful companies, including the UNC and TSMC semiconductor companies. Okay, um, here's our organization. Uh, organization including, uh, you can see, uh, there's uh, focus centers, and also we have the core labs. And I were, I am in the information and communication labs. Okay, so you can see here's uh, our ICL information and communication labs organization. Yeah, there's about 800 people inside, and uh, you can see we are in the division for telematics and vehicular control system. Yeah, actually there's a lot of divisions also inside. <laughs> okay, and our, our research and development field, including the next generation about uh, communication technologies and broadband convergence system and integration technologies, and the smart internet of everything. Okay, so we are in the field of the smart internet of everything. Yeah. Okay, so here is about a brief short introduction about the Ichi. Okay, so um, if you have more interest, you can go to the website uh, www.ichi.org.tw. Okay, and here is the second part I will uh, talk about our uh, V2X development and vision. I don't know, do you know about V2X? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, Bridget. It's a communication wireless between car and car and car and the infrastructure. Yeah. It is uh, using the uh, radio, radio channels for as a broadcasting message or directly broadcasting or broadcasting, multicasting in a geographical area and uh, uh, you, you, have, you have seen this, this technology can be used to uh, communicate with some uh, neighbor vehicle in the ad hoc network modes. Okay. So there is no need for infrastructure or some, this is a more autonomous uh, networking technology. Yeah, good, very good answer. <laughs> yeah, there's a <laughs> no more. There's no. <laughs> it's a, no, it's okay. You can share the others. <laughs> there is a candies inside. A lot of candies. Um, actually, V two X means a uh, uh, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, and vehicle to roadside. Actually, also there's a vehicle to pedestrian. A lot of definitions, so we call it V2X technology. Okay. Um, so here is about our development. Um, actually, in our division, we uh, have uh, 40, almost 40 employees in our division. We all focus on the telematics research, and from the two. Um, we, our division was established in 2008, so it's uh, quite new. And um, we focus on the development, uh, including the communication unit. And also, we have our own testing lab. Okay. Um, and we also have uh, some uh, test field 
in Taiwan, including the wind motion in our highway, uh, one testing field, okay, okay. And, uh, and we also have our uh, bus priority system in Zhubei, nearby Xinzhou, okay. And I will talk more detail about this, okay. And here is our, bar, um, our roadmap. Maybe you don't know uh, what is IWCU. IWCU means the uh, E-Tree with DSRC communication unit. So we call it IWCU. It maybe means the uh, onboard unit or roadside unit. Okay. So we from the 2009, we um, made our own uh, specific uh, devices, uh, which comply with the uh, IEEE 2.11p and 6009. And then from 2000, 2010, we have, you, you can see we have different, different version of the, of the device. Yeah, because uh, we want to integrate some new functions, new uh, uh, wireless technologies inside, so it comes bigger. <laughs> but right now it becomes smaller. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because we, we know um, if we want to uh, de design the V2X solution, it must be, um, the size must be small, so you may have more flexibility to make more applications on this. Okay, so this is our, um, our product roadmap. And here's our, our lab. Um, actually, our lab um, was established about three, three, two or three years ago. And uh, because why we want to have a testing lab? Actually, uh, because we have been participated into U.S. and uh, European uh, standard interoperability test. So we have a, a lot of um, experiences on this. So um, we have built our own testing lab. Um, we have the interoperability testing environment and also conformance testing facility, and we have our own testing car. Okay, it's a, I don't know, do you know this? The brand of this is Luxion. <laughs> like the Lexus, but it's Luxion. And we have um, the toolkit inside, it's a mobile roadside equipment. Okay, and we can see some videos here. Um, we don't need to uh, the sound because it's on only background music. Yeah, but you can see. I can explain to you. Okay. Oh, I should stay here because it runs very quick. <laughs> and here's our um, here's our uh, our institute, and uh, we implement the uh, IEEE standard and also European. A TCITS standard, and you can see he's from the wing motion, and he's on the road as a mobile road site. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I can. Okay. So this is our testing lab. Uh huh. Okay. Our testing facility is about um, interoperability and conformance testing tool, and here's the indoor testing. And also we have the outdoor testing. Okay, so right now it's about to go around to show um, which equipment in this lab. We have the uh, spectrum analyze. Uh huh. Yeah. And okay, this number two. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, so this is also a conformance testing tool okay, for participating to some interoperability testing, including the US and the um, SC. Mm -hmm. So you can see, um, I want to show this, okay. Uh, sorry. So this is actually you can testing the uh, roadside uh, or also the roadside onboard unit to roadside uh, onboard unit to onboard unit. So this is for the cage. Okay. Okay. And here's our performance evaluation. Yeah. Um, uh, because you want to know how the communication capability so you can use the uh, devices to 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 show the abilities of, of it. Okay. So here's our um, uh, our short introduction of our lab. So you don't have to imagine this. Uh, okay. So yeah. 
So this is our lab, it's our testing lab, and also uh, our outside, our vehicles outside, can, you can uh, put the mobile equipment uh, in the car and get some uh, feedback in our um, uh, roadside equipment management platform in the lab. Okay. And here is talking about our V2X solutions. And V2X, um, here we have the vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to roadside, and vehicle to infrastructure solution. For the vehicle to vehicle, we have the uh, per applications for uh, personnel mobility. This is a specific application we call, sometimes we call it a group communication system. So while you are, um, you are uh, with friends, you are going out on the weekends, but you don't want to buy a walkie-talkie, sometimes a walkie-talkie, you can just only one, one person can talk, right? But um, if, you, if you have the umber unit inside, in, in the car, and um, it can use the uh, Bluetooth technology and to connect to your cell phone, and then you can use the cell phone to talk with your friend. Yeah. But, you know, the, uh, actually the communication range um, is within 500 meters. Yeah. But we have another um, wireless, uh, wireless connectivity like 3G, 3.5G. Yeah, so when they are not within the, within the communication range with the wave DSRC, say, um, so the box will um, automatically uh, switch to the 3G. Okay. So here is, um, here is a V2R, uh, vehicle to roadside. It's application for uh, public mobility. Uh, there's a way in motion. We have uh, videos on this, so we will uh, explain it detailed later. And we have the bus priority. And here is this, uh, uh, SPAT. Uh, you can see uh, like this is a scenario like um, people when they in the car, they can know about the traffic uh, traffic lights in front of uh, the intersection. Then he can know whether he to speed up or slow down. And here is a V2I, vehicle to infrastructure, is applications for commercial mobility. Okay, we can talk it later. And this is our, um, when, uh, the, just like I uh, talked before, um, actually if the car equipped with the umber unit, and you can use the um, uh, Bluetooth connectivity to the cell phone, and then you can see there is uh, some videos and there's some photo, some image of each other. And also you can uh, talk to each other. Okay. And here's our, our um, wing mo um, okay. Here's our uh, like uh, transit signal priority and wing motion and spot. Let me see here. Okay, this is our transit signal uh, priority system. Maybe um, many of you may know about this solution. Um, this is very simple, just like um, when the bus, when they go into, before they go into the intersection, okay, uh, if right now the traffic light is red, okay, then you can, um, this technology can recall the green light. So the bus don't stop at the intersection. It can go through the intersection. And if this is a green light, but uh, it can also to extend the second of the green light. Okay. Um, so uh, the scenario is that uh, we put the umbrella unit in a car, and also we equipped the roadside equipment just beside the traffic signal controller. And when the bus, when they uh, get into, before they get into the intersection, and the umber unit will send the signal to the roadside equipment to control the traffic signal. And then it may recall the green line or extend the green line. Okay. So here we have the videos on this, then you can um, more learn more about how it works. Sorry, there's no uh, no English or French <laughs> or French sounds, so I can talk with my voice. Uh, actually, his, this, this is a uh, uh, Zhubei city. It's nearby the Xinzhou. Okay, and actually, uh, there's not quite uh, 
convenient in Zhubei. So the government want to, because there is a high speed, high speed train station in Zhubei. Uh, so, uh, so the government uh, to uh, uh, have some invest on the bus, uh, transit bus from the Zhubei station to Xinzhu. So here is a scenario. Okay, it's a little bit quick. <laughs> Okay, so you can see there's a, there's a green light, right? So right now he can extend the green light. Yeah, it's very simple scenario. Yeah, this is a one, one scenario and uh, there's another that you can see also in the animation. Yeah, and there's another uh, scenario is uh, what if right now is a, is a red light. Yeah, if the red light then you can switch the red light to the green light, okay? So actually, this, um, this test field is only at one intersection right now in Zhubei, but we're trying to um, extend the testing field yeah, in, uh, in both uh, two or three blocks or even more blocks, okay? So here is our small uh, demonstration. Okay, and here is uh, our wing motion system. Um, because I, I don't actually I don't know um, whether the your um, uh, the uh, front the fronts uh, to how to uh, control the truck uh, to not to overload it when they get get on the highway. But uh, actually in Taiwan. Uh, the traditionally the, the truck uh, before before they get into the uh, tow towing system, uh, we have a specific location for waiting for waiting station. Yeah, so the truck they need to go to the whether they are have the normal weight or overloaded, they always need to get on the specific land to the specific station to wait. Okay. So it may cost a lot of time, and we have a uh, have dedicated person to be there. So it may cost a lot of money. Um, so we try to combine with te this technology to solve this kind of problem. So um, we combine with the uh, those equipment and also the onboard units in the truck. And this is the most important. We need to prove. Okay, put the sensor sensor on the road. Okay, and there is a controller. And when the bus, before they get into the um, me me measurement room, he will get a notice. Okay, you, you right now you are getting the measurement room. You need to uh, go to the specific lane. Okay, and then the truck will and the driver will notice whether his truck is overloaded. Then he can see his cell phone is a green line or red line. Is a green line means that okay, your truck is normal, is good. You don't need to go to the way station. But if the truck get the notice about the red line, it means okay, you may be overloaded. You need to get to the specific lane and to the way station. And here we also have a more have a videos on this. Okay. here. Yeah, you can see. You can see this uh, traditional, yeah, uh, traditional, the truck need to go to a specific station to see whether uh, his weight or uh, his overloaded or not. Uh, so it may a little bit um, cause a lot of time. And we also have put some people inside, yeah, to see. So it's um so his uh, is his weight okay, hmm. So um, so it, it also have the a lot of uh, people need to to spec inspect that, okay. So we combined the technologies like uh, we put onboard unit on in the truck okay, and there is a cell phone. This is maybe um, actually in our new version of the of the box, 
uh, maybe the driver don't need to have a cell phone. Uh, it just can indicate that the box have the LED light. Okay, it has a green light, yellow light, and red light. Yeah, and there is a way 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 station. We put the sensor down the road, and there is this uh, uh, is a camera, and there's a roadside unit. Okay. Okay. Here's a uh, when the truck they just gain to the room, and this roadside unit will, will transmit the signal and will let the drivers know where they are need to go to the specific land for the waiting. Okay. When 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 after the waiting, the roadside equipment will know whether the driver has already overloaded or not. Okay. And if is this green line, it means uh, okay, it's normal. If the red line means okay, you need go to the uh, way station. Okay. So we can see from this one. Okay. Just too quick. Okay. And here is a uh, you can see this is a. Uh, uh, yellow light. Yellow light means okay. Right now, you need to go to the specific land for waiting. Okay, and the green light. So right now is a green light. Green light means that okay, the truck is now overloaded. You just go through it on road. You don't need to stop. Okay. This is one scenario. And there's another scenario is uh, overloaded. Yeah. In the same situation, when the truck get into the, before they get into the, uh, the, um, the sensor, they just uh, noticed by the HMI. And then he was yellow line, and he go to the specific lane for waiting. Okay, and right now he received this a red line. Okay, it means that okay, you your truck may be overloaded. You need to go to a specific way station. Okay, so here is our um, yeah, the other is also the same. So I don't, we don't need to see the whole um. But we have already put these um, videos um, in the YouTube, so <laughs> you can you can try to Google them. Um, okay, so here's our wing motion system, and this is a spot. It's a very simple. It just uh, the drivers can uh, know the traffic light, the signal, the status about the traffic light in front of the in front of him like okay so there's a green green line is re remaining 30 seconds just like that this is uh, interfaces okay and here so we ha also have our um visual applications for commercial mobility actually uh, it can be used uh in the uh, fleet management okay you can especially for the truck because the company need to know whether the truck well, uh, whether the truck is and also uh, about their uh, speeding, their uh, driving behavior, just like that. Huh? And here's uh, uh, the next topic is about our achievement. Okay, so we uh, focus on uh, telematics development over um, uh, six years, so six years. So. Uh, we have some collaboration we, uh, with the U.S. and also the European part. So here's our, our activities in the U.S. Uh, because um, um, you know there's a U.S. government, uh, they, put, they invest a lot of, uh, a, a lot of um, money to build the uh, V2V system. So they call it a connected vehicle program. Uh, since 2000, since 2009, yeah. So um, we we participate into uh, that uh, program since 2010. 
Uh, the first part is the, so this is a camp. Uh, we only uh, entering the phase one. And this is, uh, uh, the other is for the uh, USDOT, United States or Department of Transportation. Uh, in the two, 2010, we uh, participated here I am devices, okay? And the following is like that, okay? Because the following, this you can see, okay, they are, right now they are uh, putting more, they are focus on more um, pilot deployment. Yeah, so um, not only for the connected technology, they also uh, focus on the how, how to uh, communicate with different uh, devices uh, manufactured by different companies. Yeah, and we also have uh, invited to participate in the United States Safety Pilot Exhibition at 2011 ITS World Congress. And uh, this year, the World Congress will be held in the um, Detroit in the United States. Yeah, we, we will uh, prepare a booth um, in, the, in the World Congress this year. And here is about our achievements and we, our roadside equipment uh, entering the US DOT research qualified product list in 2012. Okay, and here is our, our activities in Europe. And uh, actually we uh, have participated uh, to SC standard activities since 2010. Yeah, uh, so uh, we, we have experiences in European V2X project. Yeah, uh, the score F uh, is the largest French field operation testing and uh, it's already finished and uh, is led by Renault with 19 uh, partners and we joined the project by Inria by providing our uh, solution, l 2 11 piece uh, radio solution. Yeah, and also the corresponding driver software. Yeah. So right now we are actually we are very eager <laughs> to look for a further partnership, okay, and cooperation in Europe. Yeah. And then here's um, despite the uh, uh, technology development and field trials and project, <laughs> and we also trying to encourage people to make more innovations on telematics. Yeah. So um, uh, since 2011, since 2011, we created a new competition uh, in Smart Moving, in Regional Challenge. You, maybe some of you may know the ESMC competition. Yeah. So each year, um, we just create a new, new, new thing and also a ch regional challenge in 2011 and also in 2012, okay. Okay, and right now the next topic is to talk about our standard activities in the Europe and the US. Um, actually, since the, our division has been established, we know uh, to participate in the standard activities is very important, yeah. How, how how equipment can communicate to each other, uh, how the how different um, different interfaces can be implemented, but it also can talk to each other, is based on the standards. So we participate into standard activities to especially to the L2.11P and 609, six two thousand eight. Okay, and we also participate into the L2.11. Uh huh. And in 2010, we we know the European part also very, also very uh, encouraged, uh, put a lot of um, surgeries and also work on this on ITS deployment. So we started to participate the SC standards in 2010. And right now, uh, my colleagues he is is a rapporteur uh, for the communication congestion control and. Also, I am also the working group five vice chair. Okay, so right now we are trying to 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 solve the to first first step is to um, what's the how to realize the the security the security mechanisms how how to which direction we should go to yeah um, so here's our uh, standard activities so far 
And right now, we uh, I I'm I'm going to show some status about the uh, standard. He is a this is a IEEE uh, 609 standard proto stack. Oh, I don't want to go through uh, to detail of this. And here's you you maybe one of you know uh, actually the 609 has already published a, a version one. Um, in 2000, since 2010, 2011, and also the last year, the 6.0.2 uh, for security part have been published. And then right now they are also talking about how to harmonize harmonize with the European part. So uh, right, uh, the currently uh, for the um, for the 6.0.3, they are uh, have some harmonization with the ISO TC204. Okay. And we also participated into, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, um, the right now the U.S. government they trying to deploy a lot of um, a lot of cities to to see whether uh, to see whether the result of the connected technology. So we participated into the prop test. Okay, just last last month in June in Palo Alto, California. Um, we participate into the prop test, and we also uh, passed uh, some uh, message uh, decoding uh, testing items. Okay, and here is about our SC uh, standard uh, activities. Uh, here is the architecture. Um, so we are we are focusing on two topics. The so one topic is the uh, convocation congestion control. Is uh, uh, okay, it's a uh, Robert Shore is my colleagues, and then is um, also uh, I work on the TVRA. Uh, it's about uh, threat vulnerability risk analysis revision, and we trying to yeah trying to improve uh, the revocation process, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and here is our, our so I I talk about uh, the Prague Fest in the United States, and there is a product test in the European. Uh, we participate the uh, uh, interoperability test since, since 2011. Uh, we passed all mandatory tests since 2011. So you can see from 2011, it was hosted in the Netherlands, and uh, 2012, it was hosted in the SARS. And the last, in the last year, it's uh, hosted in the, in the Essen, Germany. Okay. And last year, we also bring Taiwan companies to join the event. Yeah. And now here's our yeah talking about our next step. Yeah, next step in Europe. Uh, actually, we trying to find some chance to participate into Horizon 2020. We we uh, we are very eager to participate in this kind of project. And also, not only for the Horizon 2020. Uh, we also want to join the uh, collaboration project uh, in the European part with our video existence and via our video testing and our devices. Okay, and um, we also um, yeah we also have the opportunity to host the uh, next year the SCTCITS workshop in our uh, Netherlands office. Yeah, nearby our Netherlands office. Um, you can see um, the first workshop was held in SC, the, and the next year we will, have, will host a workshop at uh, Helmand, at Helmand, the automotive campus in the Netherlands. Okay, in the in maybe in the end of the March, yeah, and not only for for the workshop, and there will be a protest. Will be combining, will combine into this event. So we can see maybe some of you may be interested to participate in this. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So right now is the concluding remarks. Actually, um, so far we um, have provided some some uh, technology developments and communication units, uh, testing field, and also we have hosting some international competition. And now we are looking for further part partnership and also cooperation in European parts. And we know that we also ambitious to realize the next generation. OK, 
okay, uh, to enhancing the new technologies and also services and business opportunities. Okay, the last part is uh, we are very welcome to you to join the SE ITS workshop at the Netherlands Automotive Campus next year. Okay, thank you. This is my presentation. And um, we will be happy to have some questions from the audience and to have some more uh, time available for, for discussion or questions. So, um. <laughs> thank you very much for your uh, very nice presentation. My thoughts are, yeah. <laughs> I have some question about security. What did you uh, implement in your solution in terms of security aspect? Actually, we follow the first. Actually, the first part is so we follow the L two dot eleven, L two and also sixty oh nine dot two. Yeah, the most of us was follow the 609.2 specification to implement the security part. And for the Europe, European part, actually, um, um, it's also originally from the 609.2, the frame format, yeah, some architecture was some from the 609.2. But uh, we know there's some, um, some difference between the European part and the uh, and the U.S. parts, yeah, mm -hmm. and so we, so so how how to know uh, we are implement the right software? So we participate into the protest, yeah. Mm -hmm. The last year, the protest also implement the security test uh, items. So um, we we join that event and know uh, how to implement the part. Yeah. Okay, and uh, in. Uh in uh, the first part of your presentation, you, you talked about performance evaluation system. What, uh, wh what do you mean by performance evaluation? Which criteria of performance do you uh, uh -huh. test, evaluate? Oh, okay, the uh, performance evaluation means uh, uh, in which, uh, because maybe this, uh, if, if the user indoor, in user indoor, we use a variety cage to see whether it's a communication technology communication range and we also use our uh, vehicles testing vehicles to to uh, to the outside to see in which situation our communication range will be verified by different parameters so most of us will focus on the uh, communication mm -hmm. capability yes mm -hmm. thank you thank you Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I have two, two questions. For first one, can you tell us a little bit about the, the main research challenge that you, uh, that you foresee in the uh, connected vehicles uh, uh, area for, for the, the three to five years to come? And what are the, the, the strategy uh, from E3 in mm -hmm. this uh, field? Okay. Um, actually, um, from we know we know there's um actually <laughs> we know that actually um from three to five years uh, to come um uh, maybe actually we know there's a uh, different um wireless technologies are emerging so uh, right now not only for the vehicle to vehicle and also including the vehicle to roadside infrastructure especially for the vehicle to pedestrian and also how to incorporate the different wireless technology into how to implement it and how to interoperability with other uh, communication units and also how the important part is uh, even we have a very good security mechanisms and how to verify it in a very short time yeah, we know actually in some um, in some situations the the security is playing the most important roles. But um, in some in the vehicle environment, 
because uh, the latency is very important. Yeah. So how to uh, verify the messages in the very short time delayed? Yeah, this is very important. So uh, actually, we I know there's uh, still a lot of topics we can focus on. So we are trying to do our best. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And maybe a second question. Uh, who are the industrial partners? Or you, you mentioned at the beginning of the talk that you were uh, uh, subsidized 50% uh, by the government, but uh, do you have uh, uh, some example of uh, industrial partners? Uh, you mean the industrial partner? Or, okay, maybe. Okay, so here's our organization, and actually I work in this lab, uh -huh. and this lab um, about uh, 800 people, and we are in the division of for telematics and vehicle control system, and in this division we're about 40 people, um, there's uh, three departments in this division, uh, so each, division, each department maybe have um, uh, 12 to 50 to 15 people, and three departments, including the connected vehicle department, uh, will focus on the implementation, the firmware, the development, and the other department is focused on the application parts, just like um, V2, V2i infrastructure, including some um, server management, something like that. And also there's a department is uh, testing testing departments, it will focus on, okay, so right now we have implemented these protocols, so how, how the performance is that is about and almost and some some interoperability tests need to be need to be done and will be performed by this department. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to know how you manage the, the, the research part, or the, do, do you have some contract with industrial to, to perform testing, or...? Oh, yeah, um, in our campus in the Xinzhu, um, actually, w right now we have the four to six roadside just installed in our campus, and then we have our uh, roadside management uh, server just in our testing lab, so you can uh, get the data just in the lab, and also you can update the, um, the software versions of the roadside equipment in our lab. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, another question uh, for, for your um, controller unit, IWCU, with hey. which uh, uh, supplier do you uh, work to at the moment. Can you give uh, some name of a uh, company you have implemented uh, for, for this board, for instance? Uh, you mean um, the we are which company suppliers of our ROSA units? Okay. Yeah. Um, like the USDOT. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. We have um, our shipments, the letter parts. Okay, and here's our, you can see our, uh, we are suppliers um, in the, okay, there's a lot of, in the 2011, we provide our roadside equipment into the USDOT, and here's a, here's a project, and in the 2012, uh, this is a, a SAIC's a, a institute, and we also uh, provide our roadside equipment into the safety pilot, yeah, and also the stage two, yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, the most uh, is maybe uh, for your answer, <laughs> it's the USDOT and also the SAIC, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.